intro time now that it's in focus because last time if you watched the last video well I'll explain that my monitor battery was dead and I didn't charge it so I uh, was like oh I'll do this intro without a monitor it'll be fine or I don't have to see what the camera's showing I never thought I never thought to you know focus the camera before I uh, started filming so that's what happened last time <laughs> labor-intensive part of the vehicle, most labor-intensive bodywork of the vehicle, which is going to be the front bumper. This car, I'll also be molding the front bumper and the rear bumper like I did on my car. Um, I probably won't make a video of that since I already have a video of me doing it to my bumpers, which I will link probably up top and in the description. But first steps we're going to take today on this bumper is taking out these turn signals which will also after that uh, we'll be able to get out the uh, little side what do you call those rub rails which are kind of tucked behind both these turn signals the turn signals are going to be a little hard because they're rare and I really don't want to mess them up I don't want to have to try to find new ones um, and they're kind of brand new and the screws and retainers behind them are brand new so they uh, they hold really well, so they're going to be, it's not like I could fudge it at all. So getting those out is going to be the first step, kind of getting everything else off the bumper. I already took the emblem off just because that was quick. All I did was take a uh, Bondo spreader and just kind of wedge behind it all the way around and then finally pop it off. There are a few, right here, there's a few big waves in the bumper, and over here is pretty wavy itself, just because that's where the damage was. I don't really actually know where this wave came from, but it's one big dip. So, um, I've got a heat gun, and I will be getting, heating it up with a heat gun, and pushing those waves out, and getting this side as smooth as possible. Uh, with plastic bumpers, the uh, one really important thing to do is get all the spider cracks out of it. To get all the spider cracks out of it, you have to sand it all the way back down to the plastic or else they will show up in the paint job. Obviously, you want those spider cracks to go away. On plastic bumpers, that's probably half the reason why you're repainting it is because it's they're all spider cracked everywhere. And MR2 bumpers, which I've probably said in my bumper video, are notorious for spider cracks. In these two, in these corners down here, they are always cracked, always, and they're a pain in the they're a pain in the butt to sand out. So, but most of it with the bumper, I'm going to try to get it as straight as I can with the heat gun, so that there is as little bondo on the bumper as possible. I'm sure you can imagine stiff bondo on a flexible plastic bumper don't mix very well. So. If a bumper is going to be taken on and off multiple times, or maybe even just putting the bumper back on the car after it's painted, if there's a lot of Bondo on there, it will crack pretty easily. So, on especially on plastic parts, um, fiberglass is a different story, but actual plastic, especially 90s plastic, you want to keep the Bondo to a minimum, or else there's a high risk of it cracking. So. Most of the bodywork I'll be doing or trying to do is straightening it out with a heat gun and then whatever kind of skim coat it needs will be done with Bondo. So these came out very easily, uh, a lot easier than I expected so I'm very happy about that. Uh, move on to a heat gun. One thing that's going to help me out is I'm going to have an air nozzle ready on hand so I can heat these areas up 
push them out and then cool them off really quick and that's going to help them stay where I want them and not just move back to where they were before. I actually never tried that before but I heard about it and it makes a lot of sense so I'm going to do it. Why do I have two left handed gloves? everything pushed out or pushed back in um, on the bumper it's still a little wavy but you can sand this plastic kind of treat it as bodywork just a little bit um, and that'll smooth things out uh, primer will smooth a lot of it out but I'll put a light skim of bodywork over this top part and um, after I fill these holes and whatnot and sand out all the spider cracks Next thing I'm going to be doing is sanding all these spider cracks out and sanding the whole bumper smooth. Uh, there's a bunch of little scratches and dings and stuff chipping and whatnot uh, all over this bumper. So it's probably going to be stripped down almost to the bare plastic on probably about 90% of this bumper. So that's the, that's the next thing to do is uh, sand everything. Sand everything. Um, I'll also be taking off the, the lip and prepping everything for it to get molded, sanding both surfaces. Um, I'm also fixing a crack over on that side of the lip, so that's going to get fixed. I got the bumper stripped of most of the paint and everything else that needed to come off. Uh, sanded out all the spider cracks. Come to find out that there was a lot of Bondo up here and right here, and all of this side was Bondo too. I'm not sure why it had Bondo because there's it's not Ripley or or anything. It feels pretty good. I'm not even gonna do any body work on this side. I'm just gonna primer it with the primer I have, and after I sand that, it'll smooth out just fine. So I found there's a lot of Bondo in this section right here, and there's two pretty big dips. So I'm gonna have to heat those up and pull those out also. Down here there was some spider cracks that I didn't see before, so had to sand all that stuff out. Don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of this right here is a little ripply. So I'll have to heat that up and straighten that out. Now, next step, after I heat up those problem spots, um, I'm gonna start bodywork on this top area up here, the front right here, and I'm going to prep bottom of the bumper and the lip to be molded together. I don't know if you can tell from before but right here came out really good and nice and flat instead of that big hump that was right back here. The other side is good, but not perfect. And this one's borderline perfect, so I'm gonna go and do the other side too, even though I wasn't planning on doing it, but it actually came out really good. I might tweak that a little bit because it's kind of bent down a little bit, but uh, that came out better than I thought it would, so happy with that. So the Bondo I'm going to be using for this whole car is actually really cool Bondo. Cool Bondo? How can you have cool Bondo? Anyway, it's called Rage Ultra by Evercoat. They claim it's the easiest sanding Bondo and it sands so easy. If, uh, if you've ever sanded Bondo before, you know it's kind of a pain in the butt. That stuff's really, really nice. It goes on really smooth and is really good to prevent pinholes. So it's kind of kind of the best Bondo I've ever used. If you're going to be doing any kind of body work on anything, 
I highly recommend that stuff because it works very well, very easy and quick to sand. So. I know a lot of you are going to be like, dang, that's a lot of Bondo. Don't worry, it'll be sanded off. Jeez. I'm trying to stay away from that hole right there, if you can see that, uh, because I'm going to fill it with panel bond, because that will be better to fill it with than Bondo. So, yeah. And I will fill it with panel bond when I panel bond the lip to the bumper. So, that will come later this week. That'll be in the same video, but it'll come later in the video. But it'll be later this week for me. You, can, you understand. So I'm going to call this video here, um, kind of running into a problem on this front bumper. I'm going to stop this week, go ahead and edit this video, throw it together off camera. I'll probably figure out what's going on with this bumper. As you saw earlier in the video, I heated it up and tried to push these dents out. Um, but what I'm finding is as I'm putting Bondo on the bumper, I'm guessing the heat, because when you put hardener in the Bondo, has a chemical reaction and gets hot. I'm guessing the heat from this Bondo is making those dents sink back in because as I'm putting the Bondo on and as I'm sanding it, the more layers the more layers of Bondo I put on there, the bigger these dents get, which obviously is not supposed to happen. You're supposed to put Bondo on there and they're supposed to get smaller. So this one is really bad. It's a huge dip. I'm having the same problem with this one. I can reach around the back and I can feel how low it's gotten. And it's sagging so much. So I can feel this one too on the back. So I already there's already more Bondo on here than I want. More Bondo than I thought was going to have to be put on here too. So I'm going to have to sand all this back down. Just these two spots. Well, maybe more of it. This front part's good. And I still have to bodywork the front lip in. This one actually turned out way better than mine did. So it's going to take a lot less bodywork than mine did. So that's, that's a bonus. Because I am getting my ass kicked up here. I guess that's it for this video. I know it's just a whole bunch of bodywork. I know it's not exactly that interesting. Again, if you are interested and didn't see the video of me molding my lip to my bumper like I did on this one. I'll link that in the description so you can see how I did that in my whole process. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. See you next week.